Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. If it's your first time here, my name is Angela and I'm a third year teacher here in Southern California. I have basically been documenting my Western Governors University experience and my goal was really to finish within six months and based on the title of this video, you guys already know that I was able to meet my goal and I finished just under six months. So I wanted to make a video highlighting everything, how much it cost, if I got any scholarships, how long it took, the advice I have and what really helped me. I also asked a quick Q&A on Instagram to see if anyone had any WGU related questions, so I will answer those at the end. So before I get started, I do want to put a disclaimer saying that not everyone will finish within six months because the average time someone takes to finish a master's program at Western Governors University is about, I want to say two years, so that's about four terms, four terms and one term is 3,400. It is possible to finish in six months, but if you're nearing the end of your term and you need more time, please feel free to take an extra term and work at a pace that works for you and your lifestyle and your working situation because everyone's situation is going to be different. And another disclaimer is that I am not sponsored by Western Governors University, even though sometimes their ads pop up in front of my videos, I promise. I am not affiliated with them, which would be nice. Send me some money. I'll try to keep this video short, but in case it gets long, grab a snack, grab some coffee, and make sure to subscribe to my channel down below. And you can also follow me on Instagram because I am way more active on a daily basis there. Okay. So I'm first going to start off with why I chose Western Governors University and what program that I chose. And I first chose WGU because I wanted to finish my master's as quickly as possible. I can only speak for California because that is the state where I live in, but it's going to differ from state, school, and district. But depending on how many units you have and if you have your master's, you can get a salary bump. And you know, as teachers, we don't get paid enough as it is. <sighs> So if there's an opportunity for me to get paid more, I am going to take it as soon as possible. And each district is going to be different. There are some states where you don't get a salary increase based on units. So I would definitely look at your salary schedule and make sure if I get my master's, am I going to be able to get a salary bump or etc. To be more specific, I'm going to show you an example and I will put it right here kind of leaving a little empty space for all of my pictures today. But this is a random district that I chose in California. I didn't want to choose mine for privacy reasons, but I will explain really quick. So I'm going to pull mine up on my computer right here and I'll show you right here. So the steps on the left side show your year of teaching. So if you're step one, it's your first year. Step two is your second year. And the letters that go along the sides, A, B, C, D, E, that can show the progression of your salary based on the units or degrees that you have. And I know different schools are going to have different salary schedules, especially California. The cost of living is really high, so the pay is like slightly higher, but it's going to change depending on what district you are at. So for example, if you're a first year teacher and you only have your bachelor's and credential, you'll be paid this amount right here, like about 57,000. Step B is if you have your bachelor's and an additional 30 units. If you are in your kind of capstone courses in your college and you have the opportunity to save those units, like your teacher class units, I would definitely keep them because they will come in handy when you get paid. So bachelor's plus 30, you get a little pay bump. Step C is if you have your bachelor's plus 45 units or if you have your master's. So if you have your master's, you are automatically on step C it does not matter how many additional units you have. Step D is bachelor's plus 60 units, including your master's. So I was on step B for my district because along with my induction program and my college units, it added up to 30. And once I got my master's and turned in my transcripts, I automatically got bumped to step C. And because the entire master's program is 30 units, it added on to my original 30 and I was able to go to step D. So within, you know, just stressing for six months, but I was able to move two steps on the salary schedule, which I think was worth it. So I would definitely check my district salary schedule to make sure you can get a salary bump based on your units because you don't want to do the whole six months of getting your master's and come to find out that it doesn't really matter based on if you have your master's or not. So that's the main reason why I chose WGU because I knew I could accelerate and finish quickly because a traditional master's program takes two years and I was thinking if 
my master's degree from a two-year program versus a six-month program can get me the same salary bump, I'm going to go with the one that can get it to me a little quicker. And of course, it's great to extend your learning and your pedagogy, but that is mainly the big reason why I went with Western Governors University. So I mentioned in my first WGU video that I first thought it was a scam because how can the price be so low? How can you finish in six months but also increase your salary with that degree? So what I did is I called my district before I even started and I called HR and I asked if they are accepting Western Governors University or um, if it'll work. And they said yes, that many teachers have done it in the past. So I felt confident going in, but just in case because i heard some stories of some districts not accepting wgu so i would just call to double check they are accredited so they are a full-on university so you should be good but you know me being anxious i just want to double check because i did not want to go through six months of you know stress and craziness for my district to say that they're not accepting it so call your district hr and ask them first so if you're already a teacher there are two different programs you can choose from you can do the curriculum and instruction design and you can also do the one that i did which is learning and technology but if you're a pre-service teacher i think that's what it's called when you don't have your credential yet you can go through their credential program and you can do student teaching and then you can get your credential and i think you can get your masters of education like all in one package but that'll definitely take longer that's like a whole separate thing. I don't think I could have... I looked at it, but it didn't really apply to me, so I just went with the learning and technology program. So not a lot of options, but I did end up going with the learning and technology program because I thought it was a little more fitting for virtual learning just starting at the time. And I have a semi-good background on technology, and I thought that would help me accelerate in the course. So that's why I ended up choosing that one. So there were 12 courses total in my program, and the majority of them were writing papers and research proposals but two of them were multiple choice proctored tests. Tests, I cannot say that word, why? But two of them were proctored exams. So what that means is you have to have a webcam and the proctor asks you to do, you know, like a 360 of your area and you have to share your screen with them. So they're kind of just watching your screen while you're taking your test and eh, not my favorite way to take a test, but you know, we got through it and I don't even know where that I shoved that webcam back in the closet and if y'all need a webcam I don't know how I can get it to you but I can give mine to you so a basic overview of the program is you have to find an instructional problem in your area of study and it can be pretty much anything but you basically are doing research to solve that problem and at the end the capstone is you have the whole research proposal you do your research you do the data analysis and you provide the results and the little courses leading up to that kind of teach you how do you conduct research how do you analyze data um, what are some technology pieces you can use and you kind of bring it all together okay so let's talk about how much the program costs exactly so i have my notes right here so i paid exactly three thousand three hundred eighty five dollars for the term and each term is about six months so if you don't finish your program within six months, you would just have to pay for another term, which would be another $3,385. They do have a lot of scholarships you can apply for, and I would recommend applying to all of the ones that relate to you because I I am not a scholarship getter, if that's a, if that's a term. Like in high school, I applied to scholarships. I never got any college, didn't get any. But for this program, I applied to all the ones that applied to me, and I was still able to get one, and it was for... It was the Teacher Appreciation Scholarship and it was for $625, which is really nice. They let me know two months into my program. So I started the program, paid the tuition, and around October, they let me know that I received a scholarship and they sent me a check for that amount. So it doesn't cut off at your tuition price. It, they just send you a check later or however else you ask for the funds. So with the scholarship amount, I ended up paying $2,760 total. And I think that's really worth it because over time, you get your pay bump in your district and it'll end up paying for itself. So one last thing is that they have an application fee of $65, but when I went on their website, they had a promotion going on saying, if you apply now, you don't have to pay the application fee. So I didn't have to pay it, so it was waived, but when i went on the website now it has the same thing going on so 
do they have an application fee or not? Um, I'll, I will show you a picture of what it says below. Maybe they just do promotions. Maybe it's all year round, but let me look at the code was, so the code was now free in all caps on the payment page and it'll take away the application fee. So try going on their website and or type on Google WGU free application or something like that and then it should pop up or just wait until they do have a free application if you don't want to pay the $65. But maybe that's just a way for them to make you apply faster, which I guess it worked. So the next thing I want to mention is I kind of talked about it previously, but how the courses and terms work. So we know that one term equals six months. So if you are not able to finish all of your coursework within the term, they would just kind of move it over to another term. And you can kind of, I guess, have as many terms as you want. But of course, if you want to finish within six, you would want to make sure you schedule out your time. If you're not able to finish all of your coursework within those six months, then you would just have to pay for another term and so on and so forth. Since it's an accelerated program, you can really work at your own pace. So for example, you can finish two courses within a day or two courses within a week, or you can take one course for an entire month or more depending on how you're feeling about it. My program had 12 courses and they varied with the amount of work that you had to turn in. So one of them, you would have to turn in one paper. For one course, you would have to turn in four and it's it just differs depending on the course. But the catch is only one course opens at a time. So once you finish this course, you would have to wait for your course mentor that's assigned to you at the beginning of your program to unlock the next one. So speaking of mentors, every student will be given one mentor at the beginning of their term and you guys will talk on the phone and it's their job to kind of cheer you on, making sure you're staying on track and they're also in charge of unlocking those courses for you so you can move on to the next one. So before I move into my advice or what worked well for me, as well as the Instagram q and I also want to mention how I like the program overall. I feel with WGU, there were pros and cons. Of course, I loved accelerating. I loved doing things on my own time. I loved finishing my master's program in six months because I feel a lot more free and really, really happy that my salary is going to go up. Personally, I love learning in a classroom environment and I feel I learn better that way where I talk to my peers and the teacher and kind of participate in class. So it kind of relates to the virtual learning happening now. So I did not like that portion and I feel it's easier to get distracted. So if I'm thinking of this master's program as something where I just wanted to finish quickly, it was a good price and I learned something new in the process, then it is a great program. So for the next part of my video, I do want to talk about what worked well for me in finishing within six months. And I guess my advice also want to talk about my Instagram Q and A and answer those questions. And it is going to probably pertain to only the learning and technology portion of the WGU program, but it can maybe, but it can probably work for the other programs as well. So my first piece of advice is on the first phone call with your mentor because they'll call you even before your term starts, let them know your goals. Let them know if you do wanna finish within six months, I don't know, four, four months if you want to, but just clearly let them know that is your goal. If your mentor says that's not possible, um, there's no way, then politely ask for a new mentor or you can contact the school and get them a new mentor. I heard stories of mentors not opening classes fast enough or waiting until you passed and then unlocking the next one, which, you know, it can take up a lot of time. And if you want to finish within six months, every day counts, pretty much. I really love my mentor. She was really encouraging, but she also understood my goals of finishing within six months and tried to help me as much as possible. So for example, if I finished a class and turned in my paper, once I turned it in, she will immediately unlock the next one. I don't know how they can see it on their end, but I didn't even have to email her saying, hey, can you open up the next one? She would just automatically open it so I can just start working on the next class. So I would turn in my assignment, work on the next one, turn that one in, and it would just kind of flow together. I did that the entire program until the capstone where you have to pass the class before moving on to the next one. So make sure you really like your mentor and they understand your goals because since they're in charge of opening up those classes, they're gonna be really important in helping you reach your six month goal. My second piece of advice is to make a schedule for yourself and set goals. So if you have 12 courses in your program, you can say, I'm gonna finish course one 
in one week and actually write out the date on your calendar. I'm gonna finish course two in this date and write out the dates so you know your potential end month or end week and you can adjust the weeks accordingly if you need more time for a class or less time for a class. So for example, I would say that I wanted to finish this course in one week and I finished it in three days. So I would just adjust my schedule. So if you're not a schedule writing person, you can always use your phone calendar and kind of put in the date where you want to finish a course. So you can say, um, March 6th, I want to finish course one. March 10th, I want to finish this course. So kind of set a goal for yourself and you can adjust those based on if you finish your class earlier or if you need more time. For example, for me, I was despising that second proctored test because people were saying that was the most difficult one. So I scheduled two weeks to study and take it, but it actually took me a whole month because I was kind of putting it off. But having my schedule written down was easy so I can kind of just adjust, okay, if I take a month for this class, then that means I need to shorten every other class. Also, if your program has a capstone that requires eight to 10 weeks, make sure to put that in your calendar ahead of time because the capstone is not gonna take eight weeks, but the program wants you to set aside that time. So let's say you have four weeks left of your term and you're ready to start your capstone and you can finish that capstone within a week or something. The program won't let you do it and you have to do another term because they want you to have at least a minimum of eight weeks. So I would definitely set aside that time so you were not scrambling like I was because I totally forgot about that eight week minimum. My third piece of advice is to join the Facebook group of your program. So if you're on Facebook, you can just search WGU Learning and Technology Program and there's gonna be a Facebook group filled with a bunch, thousands of other students that are going through the same classes, same courses. So it's good to have kind of a community where you can bounce off ideas. The students will say, oh, my assignment got turned back for this. So you can kind of see what to look out for. And you can also see maybe some student examples if there's anyone willing to share. My fourth piece of advice is to study for the proctored exams as soon as possible. So even if your program is not gonna start for a month, I would first join the Facebook group to find out the name of the course which has the proctored test and then going on to Quizlet or Google and searching Quizlet, that course name, flashcards, and those flashcards were so helpful. I don't know who made them, but for some reason the flashcards are there. So use those flashcards to help you study and you should be, you know, good to go when that test comes. So my fifth piece of advice is mainly for those in the learning and technology program, you're going to end up doing a capstone at the end of the program and it's going to be a research study and you're going to have to do a research proposal and all of that. I would stick with the same research problem from your very first course and it's going to make more sense when you see your curriculum. So for example, in the beginning of your program, it's going to ask you to find an instructional program in your area of study. For example, mine can be uh, teachers are not getting adequate Google Classroom instruction and that causes issues during virtual learning. Let's just say that was my instructional problem. And keep that theme throughout all of your classes. So they're gonna ask you to make lesson plans for that problem, make the lesson plans for that specific problem. They're gonna ask you to find technology pieces that support that problem, find all connected to that same problem because at the end, at the capstone, you're gonna put them all together. And if you ended up doing different problems or different instructional issues, then it's not gonna flow. But if you keep the same thing, all you need to do is copy and paste for the final and it's gonna be good to go. My last piece of advice is to schedule out your WGU six month program in a time where you feel you can commit the most time to it. So all programs start at the first of every month. So March 1st, April 1st, I started August 1st. Every first is where the program first starts. So you would want to try to knock out as many classes as possible within the first you know, month or two. So if I were to do my program again and schedule at the time, I would probably have started in June. So June, July, August, September, October, November, and end, end of November. So that way you have a bit of the summer to try to just knock out everything as soon as possible. And then worst case scenario, you have Thanksgiving break at November to quickly finish your capstone. I started in August and I started school maybe like mid-August, but the first two weeks where 
I wasn't planning or doing anything, I was able to knock out a good couple of courses, maybe like four courses. So if I can recommend a month to start, I would probably say in June. Right now it's, right now it's March. March, April, May, in a teacher world, it's crazy. I, I can't believe we're doing state testing, but we're doing state testing. Report cards are due, kids are getting a little squirrely because it's, you know, middle of the year. I would, right now it's gonna be a pretty stressful. So if you wanna start, June is coming up, I would just say start in June. And if you wanna schedule out your time in advance, I would just register now and let them know that that's when you wanna start because I personally wanted to start July 1st, but I sent in my application at the end of June and they said I'm too late or I missed the deadline, so I had to, do, I had to push it back to August 1st. So if you want to start in June or another time, I would just say register early so you can for sure start when you want to start. So those are the things that helped me get through the program a little bit faster. And I do want to end the video with answering the questions that I asked on Instagram. So a majority of these questions I answered in my video, but I will try to find some that I haven't answered yet. So the first question is, how are you able to time manage everything while working full time and running your YouTube channel and Etsy? I tried my best, but honestly, it was really hard because I wanted to put 100% into YouTube and post consistently. I wanted to put 100% in Etsy, come up with new designs because I one day I want to go into t-shirts and different keychains and plushies and all of that, but it's hard to put all your love into one thing. And I also had to teach in the morning, so the only time I had to work on anything was at night. So after school till late night and i think setting a schedule helped a lot so i would teach up until maybe like two o'clock and then i would come home eat dinner i would spend one to two hours maybe checking up on my etsy shop and responding to dms on instagram or packaging orders and putting them to the mail and then the rest of the night i would work on my assignments and what helped is that i got really good at multitasking so i would just you know put up harry potter one through seven and just work in the background so it's kind of a relaxing time because i have harry potter playing but you're also getting work done so i think that helped so if i ever needed a really long break or if i felt that i was going to break down i wanted to give up i would just spend one day and i didn't do anything i didn't do anything youtube related instagram related etsy teaching especially on the weekends and i would just you know relax and do whatever I wanted to do and that can either be like a Saturday or Sunday but those that one day of just rest kind of rejuvenates you and I think it's necessary because if you're work work working and you don't have any rest then you're going to get burnt out and it's just it's just not good for our mental health so if you need to take a break make sure to take those breaks all right so the second question says also in a master's program and have been finding it hard to stay motivated what helped you what helped me stay motivated? Oh. I think the main thing that was motivating me is that if I finish in six months, then I can have a salary increase. And that was my main motivating factor. I also motivated myself by telling myself that if I finish within six months and I don't do another term, I can use that amount, which is like 3,400. I can use that amount for myself instead of putting it to another term of schooling if that makes sense so instead of putting 3400 to another term i can use that 3400 on myself and treat myself to whatever whatever i wished it's weird talking to yourself in that way but sometimes you just got to motivate yourself and that was my motivator and i haven't spent that amount yet but i bought these plushies and usually when i buy new plushies i'm like i don't need it a waste of money i already have too many plushies but you know i have i have that buffer because i finished in six months so i bought these little bunnies i have a huge love for white bunnies probably because of the late mr buns but any cute bunny plush stationery anything like that i am this was my treat <laughs> probably gonna buy more plushies in the future but if you want to motivate yourself in that way, it totally works because you're kind of just, you know, pumping yourself up and motivating yourself to finish within six months. And just think about it. If you have your master's and you get a salary increase, over time, the amount that you accumulate is going to pay for your master's program in itself. And then you'll be making more than that. So it's that 
initial amount of 3400 was a lot for me to just put forward but it definitely i cannot speak it definitely is worth it because over time it's just going to pay for itself i think the last question i'm going to answer is could a first year teacher do it um the short answer is yes you can definitely do it your first year but then there's also a lot of things on a first year teacher's plate already because first you have your very own classroom and there's no master teacher there or someone in the room with you it's just on your own so you're kind of learning as you go that's a lot already the second thing is a first year teacher has to do the induction program which is kind of a new teacher program mine wasn't too bad but i know for some districts you have a lot of papers that you have to write a lot of lesson observations a lot of just anyone constantly observing you is just the worst i do not like it but that's a lot of stress as well so it is definitely possible and if you are doing it your first year i am i'm sending you support and hugs and love all the way because that's just a lot especially if you're starting this virtual year and you're doing hybrid or you're teaching in person it's just a lot to go through right now so if you want to wait for your second year where you have at least a year under your belt so you're kind of you have a flow going or maybe your third year which is what i did that's okay too but your first year is definitely possible it's just you definitely need to put some self-care in there schedule out breaks and make sure you take care of yourself first all right so that is the end of my wgu video and i realized that i didn't tell you guys when i finished the program so i started in august 1st and my term ended at the end of january so i was able to finish all of my coursework by january ooh, let me check i have it right here january 14th so january 14th is the day where i finished all of my coursework and it was just under six months so it is definitely possible and if you guys have any other questions that i did not put in this video please leave it in the comments below and i will do my best to answer every single question so it took me just under six months to finish and it took me a while to make this video and film and edit because after i finished my program it was like running a full-on marathon sprinting and you're done so you just feel like you want to rest so you just feel i don't know I just did not want to do anything and combined with the stresses of virtual teaching which is still stressful right now it's i just needed a little mini break so thank you so much for your patience in waiting for this video i hope i answered some questions or encouraged anyone to finish their master's program or make sure we get that salary increase because we deserve it if you guys have any other questions, please leave them down below and I will be more than happy to answer them. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe to my channel down below for future teaching related videos. Follow me on Instagram and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye!